boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, our new story that we're going to start reading today, and I don't know that we're going to get very far today, but it's called The Accidental Hero, and it's by Matt McClush or something like that. Um, no, Iron Man is not in it, even though that looks kind of like Iron Man on the cover, huh? Um, not Iron Man. It really looks like Iron Man. Okay. Well, I read this to your brother when he was in my class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start with the prologue. The prologue is like the beginning of a story. It's it's kind of what comes before the story starts. That makes sense, okay? Prologue, a boy named Jack. The sign in front of St. Barnaby's home for the homeless, abandoned, forgotten, and lost, read, crushing the spirit of childhood since 1898. Apparently, the words were carved in stone because it wasn't ever going to change. Appropriately, sorry, the words were called it, carved in stone because it wasn't ever going to change. The faculty at St. Barnaby's turned bright-eyed children into boring adults, and they did it quickly, usually before the children finished kindergarten. Some of the kids managed to hold out a bit longer, but it was not a fun place to grow up, not at any speed. St. Barnaby's was planted, not so firmly, on a stretch of a swamp planned near the New Jersey Turnpike. Every year, like clockwork, the building sank a few feet deeper into the muck. The foundation couldn't be fixed, but new floors and taller towers were constantly being added onto the roof to make sure the place stayed above the swamp level. For an orphan growing up in St. Barnaby's, staying above swamp level was as much as you could hope for in life. From a window on what was currently the building's top floor, a boy named Jack stared out in another icy gray morning. It was that time of year again when Christmas was already gone and the new year was already here and there was nothing left but winter. Any holiday spirit still lingering around the orphanage was being stuffed into cardboard boxes for storage in the basement and the drab hallway of St. Barnaby's seemed more bare than ever now that their decorations were gone. With every box that disappeared down the cellar stairs, Jack wondered just how he was gonna make it through another year in this place. It wasn't Christmas present, Christmas presents that Jack was going to miss about the holiday season. St. Barnaby's offered nothing beyond what little was donated, and bullies, like Rex Staple, always stole the good stuff from kids like Jack anyway. No, what Jack would miss about the holidays was the way people acted during the month of December, the way everyone smiled more. People were nicer everywhere, even to him. It was like having friends for a couple of weeks every year. That was important because it was the only friendship that Jack ever really got to know. In every school, there was always one kid who gets picked on more than anyone else. At St. Barnaby's, that kid was Jack. The teachers did nothing to stop this behavior. They even encouraged it, seeing it as payback for all the trouble Jack caused them on a regular basis. He wasn't very good at doing what he was told and following the rules. Jack's teachers often told, often told him it was probably why his parents had abandoned him in the first place. Jack never knew his parents. He'd been left on the steps of St. Barnaby's 12 years ago and found in a cradle with the name Jack written on the handle. Nothing was known about him beyond his first name, and no one ever cared to ask too many questions either. Whenever Jack had to write his name on a test or homework, he just wrote Jack and left the rest blank. Jack blank. After a while... The name simply stuck. Jack actually felt like he had a great deal less going on for him than the other orphans and St. Barnaby's did. None of them had any family, but Jack didn't even have a name. He had no sense of who he was, even on the most ba basic level. He was a blank slate, the boy with the made-up name that didn't mean anything. The other orphans at St. Barnaby's had a few ideas about where Jack came from. Their latest theory was that Jack's parents were sewer mutants who threw them away because he was too ugly, even for them. Jack wasn't really ugly at all, but that didn't stop the other children from calling him names like Sewer Slime, Ugg Boy, and Rex's personal favorite, Weirdo Face. No one ever accused Rex of being terribly clever or creative. 
Even so, the neighbors, the names didn't have to be clever to hurt Jack's feelings. Jack hated not knowing who he was or where he came from. He hated the stories the other kids make up about him all the time. He never once suspected that the truth was something that would make even their wildest stories seem boring and tired. The truth about Jack was nothing short of extraordinary. The truth was a beacon calling out to things both terrible and wonderful on the far side of the world. The truth was the reason why the icy gray morning was the last one Jack would ever spend at St. Barnaby's home for the hopeless, abandoned, forgotten, and lost. All right. So that's the prologue, the introduction to our story. The story might take a while. It might take a while. That's okay. And guess what? This is the first story in a series. So if you guys like this one, you can always go and find the series and read the other ones. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to stop there for now. Just get you guys excited. The next chapter that we'll um, you know, get into is chapter one, and it's Unreal Tales number 42. How many days did it take to finish this book?